The Egghead Island arc has been non-stop action week to week with all these fights, transformations, and powers that we've been seeing in every single chapter. So for this video, we're going to try to rank the top 10 strongest fighters on the island right now. But before we begin, there are certain characters that I will not be including in this list. And you know, usually I like to use my imagination to try to justify a place for someone. Not out of thin air, of course, but using one or two small details and just building off of that. But sometimes there's just way too much going on with certain characters that I just can't justify a spot for them. Specifically, Jay Garcia Saturn and the Seraphim, especially the Seraphim. They're such wild cards that I just don't know what to do with them. So to avoid the headache, I'll just leave them out entirely. So with all that aside, let's get straight into the list. At number 10, I have the former CP0 agent Stussy, who we eventually found out was actually a spy for Vegapunk. Not only that though, she is also a clone of the former Rocks Pirate member Buckingham Stussy. And of course, with her time as a CP0 agent, she gained mastery of the six powers, as well as armament and observation hockey, and we got a little glimpse of her power when she was able to outmaneuver base Luchi and Kaku and subdue them all together. The thing is though, she admitted that she couldn't fight these two straight up because they were far too powerful for her. But I still think with the skill set that she showed us, and the fact that she's still a CP0 agent, specifically one of the masked agents who were stated to be on another level, I think that makes her deserving of the 10 spot. And at number nine, I have Sentamaru. We've known Sentamaru since the pre-time skip, and he was one of the first people to introduce us to advanced arm and hockey. When Luffy was learning Ryo, he had a flashback of the first time that Sentamaru had used it on him, and that was a blueprint. So he's clearly a skilled combatant. He always has significant potential because when he was a little kid, he was able to overpower and defeat these very big and wild boars using his sumo techniques. Then eventually Vegapunk wanted to hire him as a bodyguard, but of course he wasn't strong enough to fill that role. That's when Kizaru started teaching him how to efficiently and effectively use arm and hockey in order to protect Vegapunk. So over the years, he got better and better at this to the point that he now boasts that he has the best guard in the world. Of course, we know this isn't true, but I still think it's good enough to be this high on this list. And now at number eight, I have Frankie. With Frankie, we have a great combination of defense and offense. His cyborg body allows him to withstand extremely powerful attacks. But the biggest thing here is the power behind his lasers. We've seen them throughout the post time skip, and they've actually been able to take out things that even Sanji had a hard time with. When he was about to use it on a Seraphim, one of the Vegapunks was concerned that it would do too much damage. So this pretty much tells you that Frankie's radical beam is nothing to mess around with at all. And then there's the feat of him having defeated a flying six member who was also a skilled hockey user. That says it all right there. Let's jump into number seven and at this spot i have kaku the second strongest cp0 agent and just like stussy he has a mastery of all six powers as well as armament and observation on top of that though he has awakened his devil fruit his own fruit had already enhanced his abilities far past his original capabilities but now they've been taking a step further even beyond that with his awakening when stussy subdued him there's a reason that she attacked while he was in base because there is absolutely no way that she will be able to keep up with his awakening that's just not a fair fight at all and number six i have the former warlord Jinbei. Before he was even a straw hat, Jinbei gained some very significant combat experience. Of course, he was the pirate of his own crew. He was the Sun Pirate's captain, and he was feared all throughout Fishman Island. His skill set consists of a very high level of Fishman Karate, as well as armament and observation hockey usage. Armament alone was strong enough to defend against Big Mom and overpower her in her hungered state. He was able to withstand attacks from Aka Inu that should have been fatal. So clearly his endurance is something to be talked about. Just going off the fact that he was able to fight Ace for five straight days without breaks just tells you how resilient and tough his body is. So tough to the point that who's who broke his finger trying to stab him. Honestly, it's to the point that people make arguments to this day that Jinbei is stronger than Sanji, mainly because he has a higher bounty than him. Of course, Jinbei defeated a much weaker opponent than Sanji did with a much lower bounty, but he was still a former warlord and Oda appropriately updated his bounty to reflect that. At the same time though, I don't think he's stronger. That's why I have a number five, Sanji. Jinbei has exceptional feats, but it's a as simple as having Sanji fight the stronger opponent to show us that he is the third strongest straw hat. But it's not just that. Over the course of the raid, Oda gave Sanji insane buffs in both offense and defense. Now, if you were going to ask me, Sanji before the exoskeleton versus Jinbei, I'll take Jinbei. But Sanji after it, I will take Sanji every single time. One thing I don't think he can rely on consistently because of how much it burns his stamina is that speed to the point that he disappears. I don't think he needs that to be over Jinbei though. I think that his great durability and attack power that he has with Ifrit Jambe places him firmly over Jinbei. Just looking back at how he sent a 20 ton dinosaur flying with a kick floating away from Onigashima, that tells a whole story. Now at number four, I have Luchi. To be quite honest, I feel like people kind of underrate Luchi at this point.
point. I feel like this is mainly because of his fight against Luffy, but that shouldn't really be much of a stain on his ability. That's Luffy in Gear 5, the same form that took out Kaido. I think overall, Luchi's still an insanely skilled combatant and has the peak mastery of all the six powers, far beyond anything Stussy or Kaku is capable of. He's especially versatile with his Devil Fruit. It's not just Awakening, he also has various forms that he's mastered for different types of situations or different types of combatants. One form maximizes speed like the one he used against Gear 5 and the other maximizes physical strength so he could really pack a lot into his punch and I think it's being implied that he's using that against Zoro. I'm not exactly sure yet. I think we'll have to wait for the next chapter or next part of the fight to see which form he's using but this is how skilled he is and this is how many weapons he has at his disposal and fittingly at number three I have Zoro. First and foremost this is an awakened conqueror with some of the most insane feats we've seen in the series so there's not really all that much that needs to be said on why he's over Luchi. I suppose the thing now is to figure out how strong he is compared to Luchi as in how large the gap is because honestly it can be anywhere. Luchi might not be that far from him and I think that can make sense but also Zoro might have a very sizable gap in between them as well. From what I see I think he is just now starting to get into that mode of his in which he utilizes Conqueror's Hockey. The most important thing to assess his strength right now though is to see how he wields Enma. Is he able to hold it as light as a feather as Odin did or does it still give him a bit of trouble? If he starts holding it like any other sword effortlessly flowing large amounts of hockey into it I don't see any reason not to have him right on par with Odin. I don't see why he can't make quick work of Luchi as a result. I legitimately think if Zoro goes all out he can defeat Luchi in just two shots but of course as we all know the plot takes precedence so if Odin needs to stall Zoro as long as possible he'll keep Luchi right there with him until it's absolutely necessary. At the end of the day though anything is possible and we'll see what happens. And now at number two I have Luffy and I already know a lot of people are going to be really angry at this placement because how can you have the guy who defeated Kaido below an admiral? But as I've explained in previous videos I don't think it is that simple. As we saw in the recent chapter, Luffy now using gear 5 is having a much easier time than he did with gear 4. He was getting dominated in that form because he simply wasn't fast enough. He couldn't keep up with Kizaru that well. Now he's in gear 4. He's in his element. Now it's an equal fight where Luffy can stand toe to toe with Kizaru. But Kizaru is no slouch. Kizaru is a skilled combatant of the highest level. I know that might sound crazy to some because he's an admiral. That's not the highest level, right? Well, I don't see it that way. I feel like all top tiers, admirals and emperors are at the peak of the verse. But let's talk more about Luffy since he's the one at this spot. As I said before, he's in gear five now. It's a different ball game. It's a point where Kizaru has to show a lot more to be able to compete. This is where Luffy can get as versatile as he wants to be, where he can find a variety of ways to deal with various attacks and use the environment around him to help him with his fighting. At the same time, it should be important to take into account that we might not get the full fight we might not see what they're fully capable of against each other because on one hand Kizaru is trying to evade Luffy and go after Vegapunk and Luffy is in constant pursuit of him in order to protect Vegapunk so this isn't the best opportunity for them to flex on each other but we'll still be able to see a good amount of their skills at the bare minimum another thing to take into account though is the fact that they're fighting in their power plant so they might have to limit the range of their attacks in order not to cause widespread catastrophic damage and the last thing for Luffy is the fact that Gear 5 does not have unlimited stamina. It is quite taxing on the body. And if this fight actually goes a distance, he might not be able to sustain it or, or he might be in a situation where he needs someone to stall for him for him to gain his stamina back in order to fight Kizaru. Or maybe he's able to reset it instantly like he did against Kaido for a cost later on. My thing has always been Oda has handled Luffy's fights in a way where he needs to do this thing, where he needs to regain his stamina and have someone stall for him. I'm really not sure if that trend has ended yet and I don't have too much reason to believe that it has but we'll see in any case and now we move on to number one and of course that is none other than Kizaru simply put I think all the years of experience Kizaru has as an admiral have granted him some insane skills that will be very troublesome for Luffy to counter like did you imagine that he had the ability to make light clones not only that light clones that can injure Luffy honestly I would have thought they were just holograms or after images that were just used as a distraction but they were actually out there putting in work now it's to the point people are saying where was his hat during marine for it or during Saba Odi. But this is how the story goes. This is how it's always gone. Admirals and Emperors will never show their full arsenal until it's their time. It does not matter how hard they get pressed. They will hide the best of their abilities until the very end. So if you think this is crazy, I'm sure Kizaru has a lot more in store that's going to shock a lot of people. Far as I know, we still have yet to see a Logia Awakening and I have no idea what that might entail. Two main things I think that will prove to be tricky for Luffy here though are the fact that Kizaru might be able to go at even faster 
faster speeds but on top of that it's the endurance thing where admirals are able to fight for long periods of time while luffy at the same time might be on the timer the kizaru through this entire mission hasn't even taken a bit of damage so he's pretty much fresh at this point he doesn't really have much to worry about as far as that goes and with that we have reached the end of this video and that is my top 10 strongest on egghead right now but tell me what you think what is your top 10 strongest characters on egghead island comment your list down below but also don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for more videos just like this one